Hey everybody, this is Bob Prince from Cervantes Chat and Prince. Wanted to take the opportunity to walk you through some issues that we've been uh, getting from clients uh, related to limit common elements as people are uh, stuck in their homes. Uh, they are looking at issues and saying they want uh, certain items to be repaired by the association because they can't look at them anymore. Uh, so we're getting several questions about who's responsible for what on limited common elements. Uh, and I thought it'd be great to create a short little video that walks you through that. Um, so when we're talking about limited common elements, uh, we have generally a definition in our declaration, but there's definition in the law as well. Section 4.1 of the Condominium Property Act states that in the event uh, our condominium instruments, that's our declaration bylaws and our plat, um, if those condominium instruments do not uh, address uh, what a limit common element is or what these definitions are, these definitions interpretations apply. So here, uh, if you scroll down to uh, 4.1A5, we see limited common elements for its head. Uh, it talks about porches, balconies, patios, perimeter doors, windows, and perimeter walls, and any other apparatus designed to serve a single unit uh, are limited common elements. These definitions apply only in the event that our declaration does not have a provision uh, addressing what limited common elements are and what the, those specific categories are. So uh, we have some additional law out there as well, and this is the part that becomes confusing for people. Um, Section 9 uh, of the Economy and Property Act is where we generally talk about assessments and money and budgets uh, for the association. Uh, that section con contains paragraph E, uh, which says that in the event uh, the declaration bylaws uh, provide uh, that costs associated with limited common elements may be charged back to the owners, then that can happen. Uh, it's not a default provision that says limited common element costs can be charged back to the owners. There has to be some authority under the condominium instruments that states that. So the declaration bylaws are plat, though I've never seen it in the plat. Um, those documents can contain a provision that states those will be charged back to the owners. Uh, so the default is they are not charged back unless there is a provision of law that says it. So some, some quick takeaways. We gotta look to see whether or not uh, our declaration has any provisions because section 4.1's interpretation only applies in the event our documents don't address it already. If we do have an interpretation, we use that interpretation. If there's nothing, we use 4.1E to determine what the limit common elements are. And then our charges for limit common elements can only be charged back if our condominium instruments state they can. If it does not state they can, they are not chargeable back to the owner's account. So here's a common uh, provision in the declaration. Uh, you usually find a definition in Article 1 of the, uh, the declaration, but uh, you also see some expounding provisions usually in Article 3 or whatever provision talks directly about the common elements because uh, the limited common elements are a subset of the common elements. You see at the first line of the year, a portion or portions of the common elements, which means by definition they are common elements. They're just used for the ex reserve for the exclusive use of an owner. Now this provision is from a declaration written by Brian Meltzer. Uh, he's an attorney uh, who represents uh, a lot of developers and uh, probably most developers in the suburbs. Uh, and he writes a very consistent declaration most of the time. So this is a provision where he has broken down uh, limited common elements into multiple categories. First, we have a general limited common element, which is the definition of anything uh, that is uh, exclusively used for by one owner or several owners to the exclusion of all owners. Um, those are generally balcony, porch, or patios. But then he creates a subset of those limited common elements that are exclusive limited common elements. And the reason he creates a subset is he's gonna treat them differently, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But those exclusive limited common elements uh, start looking like the definition we saw under section 4.1 doors in the perimeter walls, windows in perimeter walls, uh, interior surfaces of perimeter walls, ceilings and floors, and then any system or component part that is designed in, to be used by a certain unit. So that'd be talking about like flues and ducts and vents. Uh, those items would be uh, limited common elements under this definition. So the question is, is okay, why are we talking about this? Well, we want to know whether or not we, as the association, have the obligation to maintain, repair, or replace those limited common elements. Section 18.4A1 of the Condominium Property Act states that the board has the general duty to maintain, repair, and replace the common elements. Remember, limited common elements are common elements. So this is our default. 
if we don't have anything else in our declaration, as said in 9E, this is our default that the association will maintain, repair, and replace those limited common elements. Owners, by the declaration of the bylaws, will be responsible for the maintenance, repair, and replacement of their units to the extent that they're not recovered by the association. So that is not in the law. It's not in the County and Property Act specifically states where it says association shall take care of this. There's no contrary provision that says the owner shall take care of this. The most we get there is that an owner will be liable if there's items or damage that flows from their unit. Uh, nothing that says thou shall repair uh, your unit. So uh, the real question is, is are the owners responsible for the, com the limited common elements and what are our breakdowns? Well, there are several different types of breakdowns that can be out there. I've pulled a few of them from uh, some documents that we have in ours, from our associations. So let's take a look at some of these uh, documents real quick if I can get it to come up. Boom. So in this case, uh, it is from a similar declaration that we saw the definition earlier. We see section 3.01 talks about maintenance, repair, and replacement of the common elements. If you go to paragraph B, we see limited common elements. It says, with respect to category of class of limited common elements, other than the exclusive ones, uh, the board doesn't have to do, provide the services at its own cost. Instead, in its discretion, it can either require the owners to do it at their own cost or to furnish the services and charge it back to the owner. So that's, that's one of the options. And then we come down here to 3.02. This is for the, the owner's obligation. It makes the owner responsible for the maintenance, repair, uh, and replacement of their exclusive limited common elements. So that uh, provides a, another avenue for the owner to be responsible for both the cost and the work themselves. And then we have another option. Something just happened in my house. In, in this case, We have a provision that says in 7.01a that the association's responsible for the limit or for the common elements, and then you get to this third line with their parentheses, but not including the perimeter window, sliding glass doors, and interior surface of the perimeter uh, doors, which serve the unit. So we we have is a carve out that the association is going to be responsible for a lot, but owners are only going to be responsible for this small amount of items, which uh, you know they are going to have to maintain, repair, and replace themselves. And then our third example we have is, I can get to come up, is this, where it says any charge or expense in connection with expenditures for limited common elements shall be assessed only against the owners. So the, the association charges back all the costs associated with the limited common elements to the owners. So this is a, uh, a blanket owner responsible for limited common element provision. So the, it gets us to, unfortunately, uh, if we don't have those items or something similar to that, then what we are stuck with is the association being responsible for the maintenance, repair, and replacement of the limited common elements. And if they do not do it, then obviously the owners will hold them attached to that. So here's our analysis. Step one, determine what we're talking about and whether or not it is a limited common element under the declaration. And if the declaration is silent, under section 4.1 of the Condominium Property Act. Step two, determine what categories uh, that that item fits in, whether it's a limited common element or exclusive limited common element, you figure out what you can do based off of those items. If it's silent, we know the association is responsible for it because it's a common element. If it gives the association some type of discretion, you have options. You can one, either do the work yourself at this cost, uh, at the association's cost, two, do the work and charge it back to the owner, or three, make the owner do the work at his own cost. You gotta make an option uh, choice. You just need to be consistent. You should be consistent at least across a category of limited common elements, so treat them similarly for similar items, such as you might treat doors and windows in one category, but balconies and, and patios and porches entirely different uh, because of the, the significance of what could happen with those. The key though is you have to be consistent. You can't say uh, for Bill Chat, we're gonna replace his, his 
uh, patio. Uh, but for Bob Prince, we're going to make Bob Prince do that at his own cost. Uh, you need to be consistent in how you do it. If an owner is responsible for doing the work, you need to make sure they do it. They are common elements after all. In section 18.4A1, uh, you know, the owner is going to use that as a basis to blame you if something goes wrong with it. So make sure that the owner, uh, and they got hurt, I should say. Um, so make sure that the owners actually do it. This is why a lot of our clients like to choose to do the work uh, on a global scale and then charge the cost back because then they get to control the work and they don't uh, rely on uh, somebody knowing a guy since everybody has a guy who can do almost everything. So that's Limited Common Elements in a nutshell. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our office. Otherwise, God, we hope everybody has a great day.